meeting Messi, meeting football superstars. Mm. They're just human. Mm. As a mathematician, you're always looking at logical patterns. Advice is again that my dad gave me is you want to make sure that the person who meets you today, if they meet you in three months' time, you're a different person. And then when I started going into the different areas and they saw me with a camera, mm. it became like a passport. So my name went coming to me like, bro, what are you doing my ends, bro? There's a lot of psychology when you're dealing with mandem. Yeah. You don't even know that you're dealing with psychology. I deal when I'm dealing with mandem, I deal with psychology. Brunel Johnson, going literally from the streets to the world's biggest stage, the FIFA World Cup. This was one of the most inspiring and insightful conversations that I personally ever had. This was the first time that I really got to uncover a very successful journey step by step. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. But before you do, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Boom. Boom. Hello there, everybody. This is the second time that I've said this this way. And to my left hand side, we have. I actually uh, thought you might get your left and right wrong. Why? I, you just do that. Anyway, hi, guys. It's me again. Um, welcome back to episode 12 of I, Perspective. I think it's 12, yeah. Yeah, it's 12. It's yeah. 12. And um, one that I'm actually quite excited for. Can't Why? Because I think they can probably see it right now. Oh, can they? <laughs> <laughs> they know that we have a guest. Yeah, so. In the last episode, it was just a shot of us and then it switched. But anyway. That's, that's true. That's okay. true. Um, hi, Bruno. How are you? How are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Very well, thank you. Very, very well, thank you. I think um, in our last episode, actually, um, we had quite a bit of an issue with regards to our camera angles switching. So we thought we'd get on a photographer. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Um, I think this is a conversation that we've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. And I think selfishly, I think we can take a lot from this conversation. Um, and with perspective now, what we try to do is we try to have a conversation based off who you are as a person and what we can take from you in order to improve ourselves. And I think that from by the end of this session here, hopefully we're able to learn something from you. Inshallah. And maybe we might give you something as well. Uh, you've given me <laughs> enough already, man. <laughs> <laughs> you might come with the energy. <laughs> sure. Inshallah. Um, but yeah, so I want to take it straight from the start. Straight from the roots. Your childhood. childhood. What was it like? Yeah, my childhood was like any other person growing up mm-hmm. in um in a rough area. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I grew up in South Kilburn. Um you got obviously I don't know how much you know about South Kilburn, Moza, uh, North Kilburn, Church Road. I grew up in that environment where you had to kinda know how to move how to carry yourself in order to survive. What do you mean by that? So now you had to know, like, you had to know how to protect what was yours, assert yourself in a certain way, mm-hmm. and mind your own business where it needed to be none of your business and just keep it moving. Okay. In order to, like, survive that kind of lifestyle, you have to kind of know when to be involved and when not to be involved. And as you grow up in time, those benefits come into play, okay. especially when you learn about it in Islam. That's one of the beauties of Islam is the hadith says the person of Iman is to leave what doesn't concern them alone. And this advice alone is enough for people growing up in those type of environments to survive. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it takes a lot of pragmatism, a lot of strength and a lot of firmness. So that's where... I grew up on, so I grew up on, like now you've got people like Fredo, who's like the biggest rapper, I grew up with him in school, you've got others who are in the same kind of category. So Queen's Park as well, or just? The whole area. Okay. So everything everything in that zone was basically where I grew up. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So while I was in school, I could go to Mozart, I could go to Church Road, I could go to Queen's Park, whatever. After, you know, the 11 cutoff point, things change. So that's we got to learn, okay, someone you thought was your friend is no longer your friend because of a postcode. 
these are the things you've got to take into consideration when you're growing up in these kind of environments. What would you say is your earliest memory of this lesson that you keep yourself to yourself and you only look at what concerns you? What's your earliest memory? My earliest memory? Yeah, of this happening. Um, that's a tough one, you know. Because um, what? Okay. A lot of people passed away during that time mm-hmm. and sometimes you want to do certain things and if you start meddling with too many people then whatever they've done comes and rubs on yourself. So for example, there was a time where for me to get from, let's say, from Kilburn to Harrow Road, mm-hmm. which is a 10 minute walk, yeah, because I was simply coming from South Kilburn, I had to time my journeys at the time the, the times I'll take the bus these times you couldn't drive I was like 14, 15 yeah, yeah. I had to time it do you know what I mean so in that junction where South Kilburn and, and Harrow Road or Kilburn and Harrow Road meet if you timed it wrong bro <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're at the mercy of <laughs> you're at the mercy of the other man do you know what I mean if you time it right you might just about get through and as so when you start to see that that's when you start to say, do I really want to associate myself with these guys when they're restricting my life? And then when you start to move by yourself, so I started to move by myself from like 16, 17. Mm-hmm. I realised that I could just dissimulate or disappear into like yeah, the okay. thing and no one's going to bother me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was probably the, fir- was probably the first time that I realised it's time for me to... To do something do like something that, like yeah. Yeah. I, you you mentioned a word that I found interesting and that is to protect yourself. Mm. Like at what sort of stage or age were you like, okay, like I really need to protect myself? Because as a kid, when from you're growing up. From year seven. Year seven? Yeah. Wow. So before academies, there was things called like community schools and all that kind of stuff. I think it's Queen's Park Community School. Yeah. But on the side where we are, where I was based, it was called North West Minister Community School. Mm. That school, <laughs> <laughs> that, a rough school, like that school. Yeah, if you if you weren't setting trends from day one, you are you are going to be a target for the rest of your time in the school. Wow. So from the beginning, from the first day mm. of North West Minister, I remember having six fights. First day, first day, <laughs> six <laughs> fights, and in that six fights, you win some, you lose some, but it kind of puts you in a place where everyone knows. Mm, mm, uh, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, not that you're some super bad or super strong guy. Yeah. It just kind of just gives you a buffer. Mm. And then within that now, you start to go into a group where they've also had their six or seven fights. Everyone knows each other and then everyone has like a mutual respect for each other and you're in that group within school. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's where you learn that you have to protect yourself. You have to protect what's yours. You can't be a victim. You can't be soft. So even like the bad thing about growing up in these places is you lose the ability to be soft. You lose the ability to be um, emotional. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You ain't got time for it. Mm. You kind of like, either you internalise it or you internalise it and dispose of it later in a different way that you find out your own way how to dispose of it. So it's kind of like that, if that Mm. makes sense. I think what I've taken from what you've said is um, two things. So the first one is being guilty by association. Just yeah. because you're from a certain area. Mm. And the second thing is, and this is the thing that I find really interesting, is breaking away from a mold that you you basically broke the trend in that area. Where ha- I want to understand how you got out of that environment. I got out of that environment? Yeah. Only Islam. Literally? Literally only Islam. So... Um, what was it? So when 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 we're in that position, we're growing up, we're on the roads, on the streets, hanging out with the man, them, and everything, blah blah blah. Um, I was naughty at school, yeah. So I had a teacher who came to me and said, "Listen, you you've got you've got opportunity, you've got talent to do very well mathematically. Why not focus on uh, maths and start studying and and." I'll, what's your dream? What's your goals? At the time, I wanted to be an investment banker. She introduced me to the VP Why? of... Huh? Why? 
Because everyone, everyone has a dream of like escaping the rough environment that they find themselves in. Everyone has a dream to escape the hardships. Mom, mm-hmm. Mom's looking after me, my brother, my sister. Dad's abroad doing his work to try and help the family. But every left to right turn, there's still hardship. There's still um, influences. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you're trying to find a way to break out of that. And I saw that investment banking, before I knew it was haram, was um, the means for me to do that for me and my family. So you saw success based off money. I saw success and money yeah. as the key to escaping. Okay. Okay. So that was my drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I started to study maths. I told the man, them, listen, man's going to be studying maths like a couple hours a day and I'll come out and I'll chill with you, man. Yeah. How old were you at this point? I was like 17. Okay. So quick question before we like move on to the studies and stuff. Mm. Um, you, you know, because you, you're brought up around that, you recognize that it's rough. Like, how do you recognize it's rough when that's all you know? Like, was it certain events that you're like, wow, I can't keep going through this path? Or like, because that's all you know. My dad. So my dad grew up in it as well. Okay. But he was like a bigger mindset of everything. Mm. So he could tell me exactly um, how things would play out from his own experience, yeah. the people that he used to deal with. Yeah. So it was obviously upon me to listen to that advice and not think that I was some big man and my dad was talking nonsense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So my dad was telling me this and I was seeing it play out exactly how he as said he it. said it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when he's telling me this and he's saying it, that's why I know that mm, there's more to life yeah. than that. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Was he born here? He, mm, he was raised here. Okay. So from like, from like uh, the age of seven, he okay. was he was rolling around in Paddington and all these rough places. Paddington now soft is nice, <laughs> <laughs> but back then when there were skinheads and uh, all yeah. kinds of Irish mafia and everything, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he had a blueprint of how this thing goes on, and he would tell us, tell me, tell my brother. This is how it goes on, blah, blah, blah. And we would see it. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So therefore we knew that there was something more because he wasn't a part of it. Okay. But yeah. You could, see that, you could yeah. see that there was more to life than just this. Than just this. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he was a more international mindset mm-hmm. compared to just a block mindset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was like that. So then when the studying started, mm-hmm. come back to that. Yeah. When the studying started, I used to face situations where I couldn't answer a um an un- I couldn't answer a question in mathematics unless it would be algebra cuz in maths there's only one answer obviously but sometimes you reach a block where your mind can't really get to that answer and you're thinking how can I do this blah 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 yeah. so I'm say I'll go pray to what I can't ask I'll pray to what I can't ask I'll come back bam <laughs> answers in front of me Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that will happen. That will be happening. That happened for a few months, and I started to ask myself, "Listen, how can I be praying to Raka, uh, asking Allah for um, a math question? For a math question, but I don't pray five times a day." Oh, do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not. I'm not fulfilling my five t- my five salawat. Do you know what I mean? So then I started to pray five times a day, and as I started to pray five times a day, my whole perspective changed mm-hmm. in terms of who my friends were. Uh, what I saw as as positive, what I saw as negative, um, my akhlaq started to change. So, like, I have not used swear words for about 15 years. For me to swear is very, very rare. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But before, it would be like a common chat, like how most men them chat on the road. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I started to cut that off. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So then there came a point where I started to realise if I want to progress, I've got to cut off all my friends that are from this, uh, let's say, South Kilburn. Most of them were from South Kilburn. Mm-hmm. So at this time, man had, uh, I was doing certain things. I had the Gucci's, I had the shoes. <laughs> I had the whole shebang. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So my dad said to me, listen, the best way for you to cut off these people without creating any animosity with them, since you still live in the area, is since they know you've got the Gucci's, you've got the... Um, True religions and all the expensive gear, give it to them. Say, listen, guys, this is where me and you part off. I'm going to go on this path, follow my dean, try and become someone. I don't mean any harm to, to you. So here's my gift to you to 
let me leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me be free. So I put it down. I put all my clothes there. Gucci there. True Religions there. Calvin Klein. <laughs> Armani. <laughs> Armani. I said, yo, if it fits you, take it. I, the whole, the whole, the whole yeah. group of guys were shocked. But they think, how can my man give away His stuff, um, yeah. all this expensive clothes and all that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's mental. I don't know. But I, don't, I don't sounds like, I want to be free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm trying to like actually envision that. Do you just go home, take everything, not everything you own, but all the expensive sort of things that came from that lifestyle I in a bag? Everything. Is that your take? Yeah, I took, I, went, I took everything. I went into the like, the, the chill house, the house that most men go for when they're going to chill. You know the spot that everyone says, oh, this yeah. is the spot we're going to go. Mm. And everyone knows that it's the spot. It might be one of the brethren's Houses that is the most free, the parents don't care. I went there and said, Yo, man, them listen, man's becoming Muslim, bro. I'm gonna start practicing properly, so I can't be doing this stuff anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, this is where a man says goodbye to you, man, but obviously, man still loves you, innit? <laughs> <laughs> so, because of that, listen, you, man. You know, man, got the trees and all that. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you, these times I found true religion was haram as well. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So I was like, it was, it was casual for me. So I was yeah. like, you know what? Take all this. Take it. They looked at me, they were like, what? I said, Bro, take it. I don't need it. They took it. And from that day, I said, yo, when I see you, it's, it's blessed. blessed yeah, yeah. But me and you, we ain't got no business anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So then once that happened, it went throughout the whole like area that this man's independent. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So therefore, these men knew I was independent. My South Kili brethren yeah. knew I was independent. The Mozart guys soon found out I was independent. So then when I you mean? were seen on the roads now... I was in Primark. Yeah. I was no longer wearing anything loud. I was in Primark. From wearing Primark, I started to realise who my friends were, who m- the women that were in my lives were. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like a bum. But I enjoyed it. Because I was, I was being free. I became free mm-hmm. from it. Do you know what I mean? And then from there... How old were you at this point, sorry? Like, seven, eighteen. Oh, okay. Just out of... Just out of... Six just, just out of six form. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. And were you kind of... You've just finished sixth form. Had Did you have uni kind of lined up? Or were you trying to, like, take some time out to figure life out? Because there's a big change that's happened. Mm. And a lot of people take gap years to try and figure things out. I should have taken a gap year. Yeah. But I didn't. So, one of my advices for my dad, because he plays a key role in advising me, mm-hmm. was um, go out to Birmingham. So, I applied for Birmingham University to do accountancy and finance first. Mm-hmm. And I was there for a year. And in that year, before going, I went to Umrah for the first okay, time. For the first time, yeah. yeah. So, I got to see the Kaaba. I got to see Islam in this uh, practicing form. And I was blown away. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But when I came back, mm. I still had my bad habits that I was still trying yeah, to change. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was in university, and I've seen things at university when you're living on campus is different from when you just go home and come. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I've seen things at university that just wasn't That's sitting well with me. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I was like, Nah, man, this is this is messing me up. Man, what's going on here? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whether it's a man, you know, alcohol, drinking alcohol in a tutu dress, and all them thing, then. All that kind of stuff. I was like, oh, it's, this is this is not for me, man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So then I dropped out. And then in when I dropped out now. But why did you drop out? Because mm. obviously I know you went on to study uni at uni again. Mm. But I just want to like make like why is it that you dropped out? Was it because of that? Like that was one of the key points, but then I found out that investment banking was haram. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So that kind of like shattered all my oh. dreams. dreams. Yeah. Of uh, actually yeah. becoming that investment banker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when I found that out, I said to myself, so why am I here? Yeah. Let me go refine myself and mm. find what I want to do. Yeah. Well, then I took the year out. Okay. And in that year, did some stuff. and then, mm. Yeah. So you've applied to uni. You're, you're there for, I'm guessing, a few months. Um, then you realize your dream is not going to happen because mm. it goes against your morals and your religion. Mm. You take yourself out of it. And I, again, you go back into uni later on. But what are you doing between that time, between 
the time you've dropped out mm. to the next time you kind of restart your studies? Um, in that time, I'm studying. I'm learning the Dean more. So religion. So I'm, mm. um, yeah. I'm, like there was a period in time I've locked myself in the room mm. and I'm fighting myself within that room for a month. Mm. So I'm, I'm G-checking myself. I'm trying to find out all my weaknesses, all my um, deficits as a person and I'm trying to change it. Mm. So at that time I know okay, I need to be stronger in this I need to be uh, more straightforward in this I need to stop using swear words I need to start doing X, Y and Z I'm mm. doing that all within that time And then yeah. I'm studying with a group of brothers Who a lot replaced my old set mm. With the new set Yeah. And then and we're learning like Tawheed so I mean, We're learning um, Fiqh We're learning Tajweed Everything mm. in that time Within that pace of a year and a year and a half yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then it comes now, I need to find something to do. Because obviously you can't practice the deen and have no finances. That's when you're going to fall back into the haram. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You need to find an avenue to continue mm-hmm. so you can stay on the path. So I said, okay, let me go into maths and try and become a teacher. Okay. Teach maths. Because obviously the teacher who got me, like who was like the, the trigger that Allah sent, Mm. Was Math teacher Probably the, a math, Was a math teacher And probably The catalyst for everything That Allah sent What's her name? Miss Korolak Miss? Korolak Korolak okay. Yeah I'll never forget her Have you Shout seen her since? No, I've seen her since But I haven't seen her Now that I've reached Where, where I've reached now? I mean Yeah But she played a mess of role mm. So I said to myself Why not do the same thing? So why not go back Find kids That are in a similar position to me Mm. And be relatable to them And try and bring them Yeah Into positions of Power positions of strength Yeah So that's why I went into um, Maths Okay Queen Mary Yeah, yeah. It's funny um, For those of you that don't know But I was pretty sure I recognised Bruno From somewhere um, And then when I saw him in the flesh I just knew Yeah It was from uni <laughs> um, yeah. Cool yeah So you're Obviously now studied Doing more studying And it's obviously An ongoing thing You're constantly studying You're surrounding yourself With people In that space You start uni now um, Do you Are you on campus Are you still seeing The crazy stuff That you um, saw I chose not to be On campus this time Okay yeah. That was a conscious decision yeah, but Definitely <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Definitely Okay um, I think what I've taken from this journey already that you've taken us on, I feel, I feel like you're a very, very, very good storyteller. Even through when you're talking about the prime mark and when you're talking about putting it, I'm already picturing it and I'm seeing the movie set of you putting two <laughs> religions on, yeah. on the floor and so on and so forth. But um, I think your main ambition is trying to get closer to God in the, in the most truest form of yourself. Inshallah. I think what you said as well um, during your gap year where you were very self-critical and self-aware of what you are, what your shortcomings are and what you need to, uh, what you needed to work on. But my question for that was during that time, do you find that it was healthy what you were doing at the time, being self-critical of who you were and how to improve? Definitely. And you saw from what you did for yourself then, that it improved who you are as a person now? 100%. Okay. Like one thing, one thing um, I'll say about myself is as a mathematician first, mm-hmm. as a mathematician, you're always looking at logical patterns. You're always looking for things that make things logical. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? A logical path to things. And then if it's not logical, you're finding why is it not logical? Okay. Okay. So, in my time when I started practicing, there were brothers who were practicing, who were upon the deen, but the akhlaq was still road. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So they'll be practicing, they'll be praying, but someone steps on their shoes, they still got the. <laughs> 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 do, you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's one. And then two, you've got. Um, How do you unlearn that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was uh-huh. thinking. How do you unlearn that? It takes patience and understanding that it exists. You have to first acknowledge it exists. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And then you have to practice sabr. How did you do it? 
Sabr. You still punch him out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, no, but you become more you become more patient with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when that happens, and um, how would you call it? You're seeing it that the brother's practicing, but he's still got the uh, mm. still got the. Do you know who I was? That mentality. You're kind of like, mm, okay, cool. Am I doing the same thing? Mm. So you start to question yourself. Do you know what I mean? I believe. Uh, I think there's a saying where. You want that if you become Muslim and you come from a, a jahiliya past, you want it to be that a person who sees you as a Muslim doesn't even imagine that you used to live that kind of life. Mm-hmm. If they can imagine that you live that kind of life, then you're failing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's the that's the the thing that I wanted. Do you know what I mean? Like I want you see me, you think I'm a nerd. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you think I'm a nerd. I'm happy. Do you know what I mean? It's good. Because then it means that I've succeeded yeah. in changing myself and how the world sees me. Huh? Yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? Mm. But if you still see the uh, in me, then what have I done? I've not done enough. Yeah. So that's what I. That's that's just my mentality of how I see you it. You strike me, Bruno, as a very self-aware person. You have to be. And I think that's rare nowadays. I think in a world of ego and in a world of me, 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 look at me, look what I've done, look what I can achieve. Mm. I think being self-aware is such a skill now. Yeah. Mm. And but, um, if, but even if you think about it, um, like may Allah make us sincere, yeah? But I mean, the biggest the biggest problem with Muslims today yeah. is the hidden shirk. Okay. Is aliyah. Yeah? That's the biggest issue. For right? those of you that don't know what yeah is, that's showing off. Showing off. Do you know what I mean? So, if you want to do khair, you want to do good, you want to be as unknown as possible so that make sure that that good that you're doing reaches where it needs to reach with all the benefits that go with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I personally don't want to be in a position where um, I'm doing good, but I'm at war because, you know, my face is there and everything is yeah, floating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now I did this. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I don't like that stuff. I don't want to be in that position. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've strived my best to not be a face in anything that I do. Do you know what I mean? Even my photography is only because I need to show my face because of the work that I do that you might see one or two photos on my Instagram. That's it. And that's it. The rest of it is just my work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't, yeah, that's, that's it. I don't, it's not, it's not me. It's not my Where agenda. does that come from? So the need... I wouldn't say the need, actually. I would say your ability to... Because I think as humans, we like credit. So what is it within you that you're able to say, I don't want the credit, I want you to see this for bigger than it is? I don't know. I really don't know. Like the detachment from the work. Like, <coughs> let, let's. I know we always talk about childhood. But I guess this is a thing of attention, mm. right? Do you feel like as a child, you had a lot of attention and so now it's like, I don't really need it? Or yeah, I can say that. Would you say that? Yeah. It's, it's that? Yeah. Okay. In the, yeah. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, <coughs> growing up, I had a lot of attention. I'm not talking about parents' attention, but on the streets, mm. uh, in, the, in the haram <laughs> section, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of attention. <laughs> there, was, yeah. there was a lot of attention there, yeah. do you know what I mean? And yeah. a lot of attention always brings about Negative, negative yeah. outcomes. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what How I about mean? before that? Before what? so, um, with within the family setting. Yeah, I get a lot of attention. Okay, are you the um, oldest? I'm the eldest of my family. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, if you don't mind me asking, how many siblings do you have? One of each. Okay. And then cool. three half sisters. Okay, cool. Do you know what I mean? And <coughs> through this conversation, right from the start, the thing that strikes me the most is your relationship with your father. Mm. Because you've said, um, and I think I share the same thing with you, where I speak of my father very highly because I feel like a lot of who I am as a person is because of him. Mm. And I think from what you've said about um, coming out of the the life that you used to be a part of um, and who you are today, a lot of it comes from the advice of your father. Mm -hmm. Um, Would you say that he is your biggest inspiration? Yeah, I don't know. About, I don't never thought about it like that. He inspires me. 
to be a better person, yes. How? Because there's there's a saying that he always says to me, yeah? no one is born wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That wisdom is is earned over time or from the stories and experiences of others. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So from young he embedded the art of gathering wisdom by not having to be the one that goes and touches the fire, but simply the one that watches someone else touch their hand on the fire and be like, oh yeah, that thing is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get what I mean? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So he's, he's taught me that skill set, mm-hmm. which has been probably the most vital ki- uh, skill set I've oh, got yeah, yeah. in my toolkit for life. Do you know what I mean? So, obviously, I'm going to take him higher. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, Question. That's that mm-hmm. And forgive me if I misheard this. Um, so, you know, when you kind of left that lifestyle and you said to them, like, did you say I've become Muslim or I'm, I'm starting I'm to gonna practice? I'm going to start practicing Islam. Oh, okay. You're going to start no. practicing Islam in Islam. And were you, like, the first in your family to, like, not the first to be Muslim, obviously, but I mean to really, like, start practicing and was that a bit weird in the dynamic? Um, yeah, so my mom started practicing. Okay. Properly. So yeah. my family was praying and stuff and yeah, yeah. la la la, but there wasn't no strong foundation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like there wasn't no knowledge behind it. Mm-hmm. My mom started practicing, mm-hmm. right? So when my mom started practicing, she started to put certain things in place mm. which everyone would rebel against. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't, uh, just stuff, man. I can't remember, man. <laughs> um, just like stuff. praying on time and yeah, praying on time, some other stuff, man. Yeah. But I can't remember what it is. But yeah, she used yeah. to, we used to. You noticed like, the change, like, huh? okay. yeah, yeah, you, you noticed, you the, noticed change. the change, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then Allah made me start practicing, right? Mm-hmm. And in me, I like to make sure that like, everyone, like, everyone that's around me knows I'm very meticulous in the things I do, not in terms of planning and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But in terms of If I do something I do it well If I do something It has to be near perfect yeah. If I can't be perfect It has to be the best that I can do I don't do anything half hearted So if I'm getting into something I need to know everything Of that thing That I'm going into That's my That's me mm-hmm. That's your logical brain That's my logical yeah. brain That's my personality That's everything If I'm going into every anything I need to know Everything about that thing Going forward mm-hmm. Because once I know Enough about that thing Going forward I know how to Plan out all the the pros and cons of that kind of yeah. uh, path, right? Mm-hmm. So when I got into Islam and I started practicing, I wanted to know everything that was physically possible about the deen, mm. from how to do wudu, how to go toilet, how to pray, how to do this, what is haram, what is halal, birthdays, Christmas, Easter. I wanted to know the whole shebang. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I, I did that. So when I started practicing, that's when some militancy came into the house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Some serious militancy. Yeah. <laughs> Which, alhamdulillah, we went through it. We got yeah. through it and yeah. it became, obviously there's things we can talk about later, but there's things that came into play yeah. that allowed that militancy to, to remove itself. Cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that militancy that came into the household is what put everyone on their toes. Because I was going on some, smoke. you know how you know how it is when everyone starts practicing, man. They go on some smoke, man. What it sounds like to me is that you had a humbling experience. Yeah, yeah, and that's what made you change from that. Change, but then once I did that, everyone else started following suit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I started, mm. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like it kind of goes, you know, when you talk about atomic habits, yeah, and how like small small changes lead to big results. Yeah, and it's like the fact that your mom started becoming more practicing mm. might be like a subtle thing but in the bigger picture that led to like you being mm. more practicing which led to like your family yeah, yeah. being more practicing so that's that's interesting i think the more you know something that i, I do a lot is try to um, put people in boxes mm. so every time i meet somebody i think this is a bad thing that i do i try to put somebody in a box you're like this so that means you're like this um, you were brought up in this and that. So I think mental health and psychology does this now all the mm-hmm. time, where if somebody's grown up in a certain setting or whatever, they should be like this. With you, I can't seem to understand. That's good. Because for a man that's very logical, mm-hmm. how have you become creative? I don't know. But then, <laughs> but then at the same time, everyone looks at creativity as not logical. 
but it is. How? Because at the same thing that is required for maths, technically, for creativity to come out, it needs the logical output. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So if you're a photographer, you need to know how light works. You can't take a photo if you have if you don't know light. But light comes in different um whatever you call it, gamma rays, whatever, it comes in different if you want to do the exposure triangle, that's all maths. You want to know how to take a photo, you got the rule of thirds, it's all maths. You want to know when to take a photo, it's probability, you have to scan the person, it comes to psychology, which comes down to maths, which comes down to experience, and then you take a good photo. So even the creative side of things can come down to log- logical thinking yeah. and process. That's you know so I mean? interesting. And so even, interesting. even uh, am I wrong, Eamon, am I wrong? When it comes to what he's doing now with, with the setup, yeah. he has to know if I put this at a 45 degree angle or angle, what kind of light is it going to spread? If I do it a bit too high, is it going to cover the right face? This is all maths. It's just that the creativity of things yeah, gets lost has in, been yeah. covered so that the logical doesn't exist anymore. Do you know what I mean? So would you say they're not opposite ends of the no spectrum? No way. It's just very like combined skill. Yeah. But I think I, I believe I believe anyone that is logical can be creative. What about the other way around? Same. They have to be creative. If they're creative, they have to be logical. Yeah, because even with maths, like yes, you have one answer, mm. but there's not just one way of getting to that answer. You can exactly. Be you have to think about how yeah. to solve the answer. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Exactly like that. And if you're creative, you have to think of why is it that you're doing this? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that why leads to a lot of logical yeah. thought processes. Okay. So we've touched on the creative side stuff and whatnot. Um, and I keep like repeating the story from the beginning to where we are now, just to like paint the picture. I just have to have things. Yeah. What's next? Yeah, what's yeah. that's what we do. That's we massive. try to have it in, logical, yeah. in a yeah. logical way. As Without well. any gaps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right now you've gone to uni, um, I'm guessing like finished the, this time you didn't drop out. Um, you finished your studies. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a gap between when you finish your studies and this creative element of photography that we're going to go into. Mm. Um, but before you go into that, do you like take on a job that's the teacher job that you wanted to do? No, um, I don't. I don't. What what I, try, I tried to. I tried to. Mm. So I was in a school in Brixton and they gave me like, I think it's SEN students. Is it SEN? Educating yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, it was... Um, Tough. Be honest, I'll be honest with you. No, it wasn't tough. Yeah. I enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. Mm. There was a group of black kids, yeah. like minority kids, black, Arab, and I, I didn't see no white kids there, but obviously there was that minority people that yeah. were there. And the school were making it like these guys didn't want to learn. Okay. Right? But the teacher that they had given these kids didn't understand them. the kids. Yeah. Did you get what I mean? Mm. So... When they gave me the responsibility of teaching the kids, and this wasn't like a paid job, this was like, it was paid, but it wasn't like an official teacher job. It was like... Was it whilst you were training? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Did you do your PGC? No, I didn't do PGC. It was PGS. like... No, I didn't, I didn't do none of that. Okay. It was like um, a three-month period. Okay. Just for experience before I actually applied for oh, all okay. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Straight out of uni, right? Fresh. No, I was, I was at uni. Oh, you were still at uni? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So... It was an internship. But it wasn't official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, it's a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're allowed to be there? Or are you just there? <laughs> but the teacher was the math teacher that taught me. Oh. In, Ka- what's her name? In, uh, no, it wasn't Miss Carla. Oh. This was another math teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who, his, when I started doing maths, I was the one teaching my maths class. Okay. Whilst teaching myself. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So my teacher, the teacher that allowed me to do this in Brixton, yeah. he would sit and he would sit on his chair over there and I'll be the one teaching um, algebraic structures or uh, complex numbers, complex variables to the rest of my sixth form class. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when he saw that, he said, yeah, cool. Here you go. I tried this in um, my new school, Brixton. Where he was the head of maths. So he gave me the opportunity. <coughs> so that was basically what it is. So I've taught them now. And now it's the kids are enjoying themselves because mm-hmm. they've got a teacher that understands them and they're, I'm delivering it in a way in which it's digestible to them. So it's not too heavy. It's not too formulated. It's according to what yeah, they yeah, know. Yeah. They loved it. But come to let's make this thing official, 
is where the school started moving kind of mm. funny. Do you know what I mean? Like they didn't want they don't want to give you a contract. Yeah, so that I could bring these kids forward. So I said, like, cool, say no more. Do you know what I mean? Was that because like there was no? I don't know. And there's a lot of politi- there's a lot of politi- yeah, yeah, politi- yeah, politics in um yeah. in schools, you know. Mm. I think, do you know what I mean? I think I started politics. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my background is in politics and international relations, and um, my main reason why That's I started it mm. is because I wanted to understand about injustice, mm. and I wanted to understand about how we can, because every single one of us here comes from an ethnic minority, mm-hmm. whether we like it or not. That's where we come from, and we've seen how ethnic minorities have been treated in the country that we live in. Mm-hmm. And also back to our ancestors, how they were treated. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though there is a huge bias against ethnic mi- minorities, whether or not it's in schools, whether or not it's the justice system, whether or not it's within politics. Um, and I think it leads me perfectly into you as a person and how you've used photography to be the voice for the voiceless. I think with regards to how you've done that, I think is amazing. Um, there was actually something that I was listening to this week about you. I did a bit of research. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in an interview that you had with Photo Cuss. Oh, the Cambridge, yeah. so Cambridge, Cambridge University Society, yeah. I believe. Um, you said what you've said here. And you said, I don't want people to know who I am. I just want my work to speak for me. Um, and with regards to that, why is it that you wanted to do photography to portray a message about people that don't have a voice? Well, one, I never set out to be a photographer. Okay. Okay. So I never, I never, it was never in my agenda to become a photographer. Mm-hmm. It's a means to an end that Allah gave me. And at the time of, at the time it came about, it was like Allah showed me that, okay, this is your hidden talent that you were supposed to do whatever you're supposed to do with. Hidden? Hidden talent. I didn't know. I wasn't into creativity. I wasn't into... At all growing up. No, none of that none stuff. Of it. No way. The only, thing I, the only thing I was into and I'm still into is anime. Besides that, <laughs> nothing else. You know Favorite I mean? anime? One Piece. Okay. I don't even know what these things are. <laughs> so no no Photoshop experience? Nothing. Nothing? No interest in it. And you're about it. like age 21, 22 now? Like you're about 25. 25? Yeah. Okay. And absolutely Nothing. no experience Nothing. in creative. If you spoke to me about art, I said, come on, we are talking to you? About? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you show me photography back then, I'd be like, so what, bro? Yeah. What was that your... That is crazy. You show me. Why are you showing me this for? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that comes with development. Like, I'm always willing to open, openly develop myself and not stay within that box that uh, Zach's <laughs> trying to put me in. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're human. You've only got one life, right? And sure. one of the advices, again, that my dad gave me is you want to make sure that the person who meets you today, yeah, if they meet you in three months' time, you're a different person. Not in a bad way, but whatever you were doing then, you've progressed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if I come back, so if I, come, if I have friends, I have friends in which if I see that after a year, I haven't seen them in a year, but within that year, they're where I left them to before, they're the same place. Mm. I know this person, I've got to keep a, a distance. I have to increase my distance with this person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't mean it to be bad, but we've got to progress, man. We've got to do what we need yeah, to yeah, do yeah. to get where we need to get to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. this is this is it. So photography became a part of that journey of your life. Yeah. And I think w- w- what you've done is you've lived different stages of your life and it's like you've lived a whole life based off one of those journeys so photography being one of them where it's like a chapter in your life that's like a whole new life and you said something just now that i picked up on you said it happened by mistake Mm -hmm. no sorry i i I listened to a conversation (laughs) where you said it happened by mistake Mm. what was that mistake the guy the guy who's supposed to be the photographer at the charity event yeah. For I think it was for some Gambian orphanage. Not spot, but for Gambian okay. orphanage. Yeah. This is before spot, I think. Mm-hmm. Um he cancelled last minute. So I asked my friend, I said, How much are you paying this this guy <laughs> <laughs> to take a photo? Yeah. yeah. 
My man says it was two. He was paying two hundred pound to pay the guy to click a button. <laughs> in my, that's what. That's what. I, I that's love what, the fact that you put it that way. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought in my head when I first heard that. Yeah. Can't thinking, right? That's a hustle, you know. Two bills for to come and <laughs> click a button. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, nah. How are these people getting this kind of money? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, nah, no way. Cool. You know what? Give me the camera. Since you're gonna pay my man two bills, pay me a bill. Pay me the bill, and I'll do this. I do the the photos. Yeah. I didn't think anything much of it. Yeah. So he put me on. He put me on his camera. He set me up. I'll never forget aperture priority mode. And I'm 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 going about. It's a football match. Football tournament stuff. Yeah. I'm going about and I'm snapping. I'm looking at the picture. It's kind of fun, you know. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm capturing like the, the smiles and the celebrations yeah, 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 yeah. of um of the people when they score and that, and I'm capturing the kids when they're playing. I'm like, rah, there's a lot of maths involved in this. Because when I took the first picture and I missed, I said, oh, so I need to, I need to wait a couple more seconds, and then mm-hmm. shoot. Mm-hmm. Then I tried it and it worked. I was like, rah, this is really a uh, mathematical. Mm-hmm. So, and then I started saying, you know what? Let me just give him more space. Instead of shooting bang in the center, let me put him on the. I didn't even know any of these um, rules, like rules and things. Yeah. I just said, yeah, let me just put him over there to make it feel a bit more complete. Mm. And I was doing that throughout the whole um, tournament. When I gave out the pictures, my friends said, "Right, oh, you're actually quite good, you know." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, you know, I actually enjoyed this." So yeah. then, what happened next week? I just bought myself a camera. Oh just wow! Like so like that, and I said, "You know what? I actually enjoyed this, but let me see if I can." Uh, Use it to just document some of the things I see around me. So I started walking around South Killy, Mozart, taking photos. Mm. And when the man used to see me with a camera on both sides, one will ask me like, "Bro, what are you doing with a camera, bro? It's not you." Mm. Everyone was laughing at when I started. Mm. Like, bro, you with a camera? Bro, mm. are you gay? <laughs> wow. yeah, that's what they said yeah. Bro, that's not for man them Come on, let go of that thing there oh, da, yeah. da, da, da. All that kind of stuff yeah. I was like, right, what's my man talking about, man? Did that throw you off? No At all, like Nothing Resilient I was like, what are these guys talking about? You just watch, man You sit there mm. Because at the, at the time I was seeing this as, you know what? This is something to keep me going mm-hmm. In this interim So I'm going to continue Did with Did you it. have a job? No, not at the time, no Okay So this was yeah, freelance? Interim. Yeah, no, freelance. No, no, I was doing it all by myself, man. I had some money that I'd saved up before that I was just running through in that time period. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That allowed me to be out and about shooting, not have to care about anything, yeah. not have to think about uh, finances or anything. So I was taking these photos and um, I was enjoying it. Man, they were like, oh, what are you doing, bro? You can't you be take taking this. them. Yeah, I took showed pictures them of them. Like, I showed oh, them. They're like, right, that's sick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, bro. And they were like, huh? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then and then when I started going into the different areas, and he saw me with a camera, mm. it became like a passport. So my name wasn't coming to me like, bro, what are you doing my ends, bro? It wasn't oh, that anymore. Yeah. Accepting it was right. You're, you're a cameraman, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. You're a cameraman. I was like, yeah, bro. Right, I'm gonna need you to do some shoots, man. This person that if he had known me before, he would have said I'm an enemy. I'm a, I'm a op. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he sees me with a camera. He's like, bro, yeah, we gotta get this lined up, man. Listen, yeah. I got a shoot on um, Tuesday. Be there. I roll up on Tuesday. I see the whole lot of gang members who, prior to that, ops would have been a serious ops situation. <laughs> you know what, I mean? yeah. what does man do? Man tells me, "I right, listen. This is the cameraman. He's blessed, isn't it? Cool. Obviously, the guys. These guys are like older, yeah, yeah, older yeah. than me. Cool, isn't it, bro? I'm seeing that the whole area is now just saying, "Yo, well gone, brother." The same area where had it just been a South Kilburn normal thing, they'd be like, "Bro, what are you doing in the ends, bro?" Probably got stabbed and all that kind of things. These men are now saying, oh, no, cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. So this thing is a passport. So I started to use it to travel different parts of London Mm -hmm. and meet new people. Did you not have your guard up? Hmm? Did you not have your guard up? Like, you got a camera. You're going to these sort of areas that were considered ops area. Yeah. um, I had a strap on my hand. So my hand was always, my camera's always strapped to my hand. Okay. Right. Wait, a strap. I think you still okay. do that now. Yeah, I still do it. Just yeah. a habit now. So oh. it's always strapped to my hand. I thought you meant a strap. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. So I had the camera. Prepared, man. <laughs> I had the camera strapped to my hand always. Right. Okay. But again, the benefits of me being where I am is because of how I grew up. Mm. So there's a lot of psychology when you're dealing with random. 
Yeah. You don't even know that they're dealing with psychology. I deal when I'm dealing with mandem. I deal with psychology. Different voice. Different it? voice. Not different voice. Mm. Different. You assess the man and you you approach him as you know he'll agree to being approached. Mm. Do you understand? Know I mean, there's level. You go to his level. You chat on his level and you bounce. Mm. Do you understand? Know I mean, you don't come on. No, I'm higher than you. Or blah blah blah. Yeah, or I'm yeah. this. No no no. Yeah. You don't even come. You don't even come on a. Do you know who I am? Vibe. Mm. See if a man's a road man If he's up on the road If he's on the set And you're in his area I'm humble mm. I ain't looking for no trouble Yeah yeah Do you know what I mean If you wanna be rude Cool brother Say no more Do you know what I mean Yeah That's it When you see me be humble Cool that's You see it Are you gonna 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 Retaliate to someone That's been like that Yeah Do you know what I mean Kill him with Obviously Yeah but obviously yeah. If You progress To a different level Where you wanna take advantage also, I'm going to have to do what I have to do and then take the repercussions. Mm. But in terms of being humble, mm. humility is being the key to being everywhere and anywhere. Do you know what I mean? In this industry, in photography, in most of the dunya, mm. you know what? many people are not humble in what they do. Okay. Yes, you've got talent. Yeah. You're an amazing footballer. Mm. You're an amazing technician. You're an amazing mathematician. You're an amazing teacher. Cool. But that shouldn't get to your head. Mm. That shouldn't be... Now you're walking around like you're the Don Dada of the ends and the Don Dada <laughs> of, the, of the industry. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And because there's no, there's very, there's a lack of humility in the dunya, someone who's humble blows people away. So people that wouldn't even look at you start looking at you because that, bro, this guy's got talent. I'll give you an example. For me to get into Adidas, yeah? I've been shooting all kinds of shoots. Everyone knows, blah, blah, blah. I've got some little following going on. Boom. But I never say, oh, do you know who I am? I'm working in a studio at the time, and I'm sweeping the floor. I'm sweeping the floor. Yeah? The head of the creative director of Adidas is in the building. You see me sweeping the floor. I'm not moaning. I'm not complaining. I'm just doing it easy. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The guy that has come from Trudy's and Gucci and everything, I'm cleaning the floor, bro. <laughs> Light work, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He looks at me and he says, what do you do? I said, oh, I'm a street photographer. He says, yeah? Let me see your work. Yeah? yeah. So I'll show him my work. He's like, what? You're telling me a photographer like you is sweeping the floor? I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> mm. it's, it's, it's nothing. Yeah. But I lost mission. He's the one that opened the door for me to get into Adidas. Wow. To put me into the into the pool of selected photographers. Where Which, is this? Where is what? Like you're sweeping the floor, where did you say? Studio. In the studio. Or just a random studio at this? No, a studio in um Yeah, it's a random studio. But it's in But Beckham. he happened to be there. He happened to be there because he had rented out the studio mm. to do a shoot. Wow. Do you understand? Everything just like falling into place without Yeah. Why? Because I didn't go around saying, Oh, I'm the OG, triple OG mm. of the of the photography world, blah blah blah. No, mm. I said yeah, here, yeah. boom. I got into Adidas. When I yeah. got into Adidas, I started meeting other people. Yeah, they're seeing my work and they're seeing that I'm not arrogant like the other photographers. Mm. So they're opening the door. Yeah, and and the only issue I have with some of these people yeah. is the fact that I'm Muslim. Mm. So a lot of jobs I reject. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of things I don't I don't take into consideration. Yeah. So I'm hard to work with because he has talent, but he doesn't want to compromise. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That is crazy. That the fact that you were at the right time, sorry, right place, right time, and he just came up to you. That's yeah. insane. That, that, that's the same. It's mad because why? Even the first before it led to that, for me to actually get to that studio, I was at uh, I was with someone. Who took me to London Fashion Week mm. Because they liked my work mm. They said that I shouldn't be Just walking the streets of Kilburn I should be in this place I should be in the happening place Is that the point you're like Okay, w- wait a minute I can actually do something with this Like, w- At what point do you go from Yeah, the guy that's just taking pictures In the area To like, I can actually make money Like serious money with this when does that click? Probably when I finish my FIFA job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. yeah so no, I never, I never, I never thought. Um, 
Like a lot of people think that my journey, I started thinking about I can make money as a photographer, blah blah blah, blah like that. I never never had that in the back of my mind. Yeah. Because even though I'm in the industry, there's a lot of things that I was watching to make sure that I didn't fall into. So fashion, you're not gonna catch me in fashion. I tried it once, I saw what was in it, I said, Oh, you know what? <laughs> <Man's> <laughs> <alama."> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean? It was all of that kind of stuff. I tried other things and said, nah, nah, it's not for me. Mm. So I never really thought um I never really thought photography was my source of income. Mm. I just thought it's gonna carry me for now until I find what I can do to I ever use it because mm-hmm. Allah knows why he's giving me this talent or until I can actually find a better job that provides for me in a position where I can be of yeah. benefit. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's always been like that. So I've never really, that's why I've, I've rarely ever called myself a photographer. Yeah, I've, I've realised you use that term very loosely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah you I don't, don't really like to attribute it to yourself. No, I don't. I don't like it. I'm not a photographer, I'm just a guy with a camera that happens to be called a documentary photographer <laughs> because they keep putting titles to my name mm. that I have to say, okay, I'm a documentary photographer. Mm. But freely, trying to put it in a box. Yeah. box. So I just say I'm a guy with a camera, Thanks. naturally. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like that. Wow. The World Cup final. Yeah. Probably the best game <laughs> I have ever watched in my life. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Which I personally think summarised the best World Cup ever. we've ever seen. Yeah. In our life. Hundred percent. How was it like? It was amazing. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's just make it clear for people mm. that don't know. You were there. Yeah. I was the, like as close as you <laughs> humanly get <laughs> yeah. to the center stage. Yeah. How does that even come about? And what was that like? Again, it comes from Allah as well. Because yeah. the people reached out to me FIFA reached out to me Saying they want me to do their work Was that a DM? Was that like was right? a, I don't know how that even comes about It was an email Okay, okay. So what, what had happened is The person who is in charge of the commission that FIFA gives them So FIFA have like a subsidy company And that mm-hmm. subsidy company then goes and finds The talent, talent to yeah. go and do the work Right mm-hmm. So that person had seen my work And fell in love with it Alhamdulillah Yeah Industry rules is you can't just take one person and straightly put them in. You can if you're doing nepotism, but in an open field, you got to put at least three or five different photographers mm. or different creatives in that bundle package that the rest of the um, committee can choose from. Okay, so in my bundle there were two other photographers. And Allah made it that every single person in that committee said, we want this. So therefore, it was still that it was Bruno Johnson that they wanted. Did they know your name? Or they still no, blind. Blind work. Yeah, oh. blind work. In fact, when I, when I was working with the, the guy, nice brother, very nice, he said, listen, I know, had I researched who you were, there's a possibility that I might have been biased. Mm-hmm. Wow, he so said that. He said that because this, this is relative to the industry. Wow, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, and I'll tell you, this is this is one of the reasons why I don't attach myself to my work because, yeah, in in um in the world that we live in now, as a minority, as a person of color, if you say something, there's a high chance it's just going to be deafened, it's just going to be cancelled, yeah. right? But if you want the work to actually reach places it needs to reach mm. it can't be attached to someone it just has to be the work mm. do you understand what I mean so when the work is there yeah. and it's hit them and then they've absorbed it then you can say yeah it was me that created it yeah. but then it's too late for them to reject it yeah. because now they've absorbed the information and they've understood what is being told do you understand what I mean and that's how that's how yeah. I've seen it work and that's how I prefer to do it I don't want no fame. I don't want no name to be attached to my work. And then, oh, that's Bruno Johnson's work. No, no, I don't need that. That's not my. That's not my. Um, my desire. Yeah, it's not what you want. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not after fame. I don't want fame. Mm-hmm. Fame is a problem because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I want to be able to. If I need to wear a, a, a overall and go and get a van and do um, 
some removals yeah. or clean the streets to make some money. I want to do that in peace. Do you understand what I mean? 100%, yeah. I want to be able to do the things that people look up, look down upon in peace without someone saying, oh, look, that's Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. That's the reality. I don't need that. And I've seen, I've seen all my virgins that have fame, they lose their freedom. What is life without freedom? Do you know what I mean? I don't want, I don't want fame. I want freedom. What is freedom to me? Freedom is to be able to do anything and do everything I want to do when I want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Fame, where I have to let go of my freedom. I can no longer travel the bus. I can no longer travel the train. I can no longer do this, do this, do this, and I'm doing it in sacrifice of money. It doesn't make it's. It's not. It makes no sense. It makes yeah. no sense to me. Hundred percent. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make no sense. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather be in a position where, cool, I've got you got your little recognition, cool. I'm still able to do what I need to do, cool. It's true because I even don't. even with you during the World Cup, because I was I was looking at your content as you were posting it, and I remember I bumped into you in East London, mm-hmm. and then I think it was before or after the World Cup, and you told me that you had just done the World Cup, and I mm-hmm. was like, no way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, all of us here, we're all football fans, and growing up, that's the biggest stage ever. Mm. Um, do you think, for you, after that experience with the World Cup, that it's made you love photography and what you do more? Or have you gone on the other side now, where you found it a bit more like, do I really want to carry on doing this? So, I've retired from photography. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, I mean, I've retired from any form of work related photography. Mm. Um, Qatar showed me that. Um, Yeah, like what people hold to be great is nothing. It's it's worthless. Do you understand what I mean? Like when you're in it and you're seeing the reality of it, you realize that all of it is is just air. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Like how would I put it? The environment of the match, amazing, cool. Are you talking about the final? Talking about the whole okay. The thing. Whole let's say let's say the whole tournament. Yeah, amazing. It's an amazing experience. You absorb it. But that's it. Meeting Messi, meeting the the football superstars. Mm. They're just human. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're just human. So when you when you put it back in mind that these guys are just human, it's like, so what? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I've and I've been like that. I've been like that since I first met Messi. When I met Messi, that's when all forms of like. Bro, you know how crazy that is? Hmm? Everyone just becomes human. Like, yeah, this guy is. Do you know? Because you, you know what it is. You know, if there's anybody that like, I think it is a problem. You're right. You saying it the way you just said it mm. has just grounded me even more. Because I'm just like, it's true. They are just human, but because you watch them every single week, and you in your mind, and I think I can. This could be a problem to myself as well. Sometimes where sometimes I can idolize. Mm people based off their craft and then when you see them in person you could either react one of two ways and your in your way it's just like it's just a human in another person's mind it could just be i can't believe i'm next to them I yeah, yeah. no nah, i totally understand it but it's it's like how would i say it? um how do you put it it's like islamically you know who your role models are mm. you know what a role model should be Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for me, I've embedded in myself a person can only be a role model if they're promoting good, if they're promoting khair. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When I look at, let's say, for example, a fireman, I'd have more respect for a fireman than I would with a celebrity because at the end of the day, the fireman has to risk his life to go and save people. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas with a celebrity, whether he's a footballer, he's a photographer, he's a singer, he's a whatever. What are they doing? It's only entertainment. That's all they really are. A celebrity is only an entertainer. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, when you look at society today and we take these celebrities as 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 idols, that's why our society is so mashed up. Because the people that are supposed to give the advice to make a better society, we put them and quiet them in the side. Mm-hmm. No one pays attention to them unless they're doing nonsense. No one pays attention to them. Right, mm-hmm. but the people who kick a ball. Okay, think about it. If you're in the town of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you met a man kicking the ball. What Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? 
say yeah that's his job but oh, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously Allah, Allah yeah, yeah. but you'd be like he's not doing anything serious yeah, yeah you're right what is he you're doing right. to what is he doing or so what is he or she doing that is progressing humanity besides making people sit on a couch for 90 minutes and lose themselves nothing what is he doing what are they doing to promote uh khair? nothing they're just entertaining they're just they're just that uh what's it called distracting you from the reality of life most Did you people have this perspective before meeting him yeah i had this perspective before even meeting before him. even before meeting him okay even before meeting uh who's the first person so i met some rappers man yeah some famous rappers can you name drop i can't remember <laughs> it's, this, this, it's a long <laughs> list you know what i mean yeah during the world cup so for real for williams Fredo. yeah hey, for real Fredo grew up with him. That's that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's his boy. So I think I think um, I think maybe your upbringing and seeing people do well and have that public lifestyle and seeing them for who they are maybe helped you with this because somebody that's not exposed to the lifestyle of what fame really is. Maybe for the first time, them meeting somebody that they've seen for their whole life, they'll be struck, starstruck completely. I don't know, bro. I don't know because even before I even thought photography would lead me down that route mm. of being amongst these people, I never really saw um, celebrities as people of respect. Ah, oh, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they, I get what you're before saying. They come, before they come on to me, <laughs> do you know what I mean? A lot of people, are people that I'm going to hold yeah. of high esteem. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because really and truly, let's say, for example, someone like, okay, let's say, for example, someone like Muhammad Ali, I would hold him to high respect. Why? Because of what he done for humanity. Because of what he did for humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malcolm X, I'd do the same thing. Okay. Marcus Garvey, I'd do the same thing. In the same breath, then, in the same breath as you said, Lionel Messi, mm. people who have done so, there are footballers that have done stuff. I hold him to high Sadio respect. Amane. Yeah, I hold him. Yeah, I hold him to high respect. Do you know what I mean? But as, at the same time, even though I hold him to high respect, I am not going to idolize him. Oh uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? respect what they've done. I respect what they've done. Yeah. But I'm not going to idolize them. I'm not going to start shaking. I'm not going to start um, thinking. This is not arrogance. Mm. This is just this man is human. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This man is human. He's the same like me. He might be doing worse than me behind closed doors. That's true, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, I give him respect, but mm. that's it. Mm. Where respect is due, I give it. Yeah. But to start going beyond it, it's mm. impossible. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. <laughs> so, okay. Um, with like, I'm just trying to understand what your job entailed as a photographer for FIFA. Would that be things like taking pictures in the dressing room or taking pictures of the game, of um, the fans, or just everything? So FIFA gave me the only access of my kind for this whole World Cup. What does that mean? So I was all access everywhere. I could go anywhere and anywhere. I could just show up and they had to let me through. No way. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, every match wow. I go for free. I go. I can go into the stadiums. I can go onto the pitch. I can go actually onto the onto the actual pitch well, where like the man's like those guys get chased. Yeah, I could do that. Do you know what I mean? Um, everything. Uh, when when Pele was expected to die during the World Cup, I was meeting uh, Peter Dury to... Is that the commentator? Yeah, cool. commentator. Oh, that was sick one. Yeah. Yeah. I was meeting, yeah, I was meeting him to do the obituary. Mm. Um, all kinds of things. Oh, so they expected it? Yeah. And then because they were expecting it, they were already thinking about the content behind it? Yeah. And no one else had this access? No one had this access. At all. At all. That is one. At in all. Like literally, if I want, if I wanted something, I'd ask the head directly, and then they would basically approve it because it had to be used for a big part of uh, FIFA's end documentary. Mm. When's that coming out? Because I know you. It came out, but the UK, out, the UK and the Western world rejected it because it's too Islamic. Huh? Is it? Yeah, it has me. It has me talking about Islam. It has me. No way. Uh, talking everything I'm saying now. But on a international really? perspective, yeah. Wow. So, because it doesn't fit the agenda of Qatar being what they push Qatar to be, they said no, they're not going to play. 
That's wow. ironic you say that actually because even um, here we've had conversations about the World Cup mm. and we've said how um, there has been a lot thrown at Qatar for, 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 for nothing basically. Mm. They've Western media has basically put them in a box um, saying that they are a certain kind and they're this and they're not progressive and they're that. Um, but you've been there. Mm-hmm. You've seen it. Yeah. And how it's was it? It's all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. <laughs> it's all an exaggeration. Like Qatar's not perfect. Yeah. But Qatar, the f- shortcomings of Qatar could easily be the shortcomings of the UK. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In the UK, you have workers that are, are underpaid. You have workers that are doing stuff for free or doing it over time. Mm-hmm. In fact, you have retail workers who are working almost two jobs in the retail job mm-hmm. and being paid less than if they were doing it three, four years ago. Yeah, yeah. No one's talking about that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In Qatar, most of the people that were outside enjoying themselves that weren't in the stadiums, but in the actual fan parks, were immigrants, were migrants. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you go to a fan park where the alcohol is being sold and you'd have them playing, uh, you'd have Indians, uh, Afghan people all celebrating and watching the match. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But that wasn't represented. That wasn't represented. Yeah. They tried to stay away from that as much as possible. Do you know what I mean? Qatar was the first place I've ever been where I could leave my iPhone on the table and no one is going to take it. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? I was, I was, I was confused when I saw that. <laughs> Yeah, See, that. yeah, when I went to when I went to the the shopping mall yeah. to get some food, I was seeing like Dior bags, you know the expensive stuff. I've yeah. seen iPhone, latest iPhone. I see all that kind of stuff going on. I think I asked asked the person with me, "Yo, bro, what, why, why are all these stuff here?" Ah, oh, people leaving them to hold the chair, <laughs> <laughs> to hold their space. I was like, "What? Hold the space?" He's like, "Yeah, that's what we do here. No one's gonna take it." And I was like, "What?" Yeah. I was seeing women walk at 2 a.m. in the morning. No one's harassing them. No one's even thinking about harassing them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, what's going on? What are these people talking about? See it, it takes it back to the perspective of um, during your life, right at the beginning of it, when you took us through that just now, mm. where you said how you didn't know that there was a different life mm. until you saw it. Until I saw it. And now it's the same thing. Yeah. You didn't know about a different life mm-hmm. until you saw it in Qatar. Yeah. And now you've seen the light. I've seen the light. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I've, 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 for the past five, five years, no, let's say six years, six years, I've never believed the word these people say here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've never believed it. I never will. Because here, it just lies, man. It just lies. But the problem is, because they lie so well and everyone takes the media to be true. Mm-hmm. When you come with something different, you're a conspiracy theorist. Or you're anti this, you're anti that. But it's the reality. Do you know what I mean? Everyone that went to Qatar that was uh, somewhat racist or somewhat uh, had uh, negative expectations. Came back with a completely different Came view. back completely yeah. different. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. When we got lost finding one of the subjects that we're going to interview for our documentary, and in the UK, if you park in front of someone's house, you're gonna come out. That person's gonna come and give you the two fingers. Now. <laughs> what are you doing in my? What are you doing in front of my yard? Yeah, yeah. Off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Then what did they bring? They bought Teas sweets, and right? sweets and it, coffee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They even hand, they even grab you by the hand and take you to the person's house. They force you to eat. No, as in you, the first yeah, to eat, yeah. obviously you have to eat because it's custom, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm talking about as in like they'll grab your hand and say, "Oh, we'll follow. You. We'll take you to Forland's house." We know where they are. You're in the wrong place. You have to go down here. And they'll physically walk you there, introduce you, and go about their business. Where are you seeing that in the world? Are you seeing that here? Most definitely not. Do you know what I mean? But then they'll say, oh, that's only because of the World Cup. It's the rest of the time, it's all... Yeah. Da, 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 da. But then everyone that is working out there that's an expat, they don't want to come back here. Mm. The only reason they'll come back here is if Qatar ends their, their um, visa or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't have to come back here But was, if they can stay out there as long as possible They would mm. So why is it that they want to stay out there Yeah, If it's a bad place In the same breath um, Of you travelling I think you've done a lot of travelling mm. um, And it epitomises what you've done With your photography as well Where you've Captured the World Cup mm. um, But you've 
through where we've met anyway, you've also captured really raw things where even recently um, you were in Turkey and I personally work for a charity and the work that we were doing on the ground and what I was seeing every single day um, just looked mental. In Turkey? In Turkey and yeah. Syria. No, I wasn't there, so oh. I, but my colleagues were there and I was seeing Mm-mm. daily things every single day I was being sent. This is what we've seen. This is a one case yeah. study. This is this, this is that. How did it even come about where you ended up going out there? How did it even come about? Yeah, where you ended up going out there. So after after FIFA, I made my decision that I don't want to do this kind of work. Mm-hmm. Allah didn't give me that um, talent for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got, I've achieved my goal and what I needed as protection, as a, like a social passport mm-hmm. for me to move forward in what I want to do. I've got it now. So now it's for me to do what I need to do. So as a Muslim, as a photographer, if you want to go down the path of working for uh, the deen or for the ummah and whatever, you need to have reference mm-hmm. to prove that you're not Someone that these people want to paint you as later on. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So with it, once I've got it, and you know I'm a photographer, I'm gonna do my work, which is what I set out to do a long time ago. But I couldn't do because I wasn't in the right position to do it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So as I said, I don't know why Allah gave me my my talent as a photographer, but I believe it's for these type of causes. Okay. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Everyone, uh, uh, another thing that my dad spoke to me about Mm -hmm. is everyone has a talent. Everyone's given their talent. How they choose to use that talent will either be for or against them, okay? Let's say a person sings, he's got an amazing voice, yeah? That person, his voice or her voice, was meant to recite the Quran in Tajweed to bring the people to the deen and and make the salah and everything. Mm -hmm. That's why they were given that voice. Or whatever other reason why. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But they chose to use it for music. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Another person could be athletic. But that could be used for a different thing instead of what he's yeah, actually yeah, using I it understand. for. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? So for me, my talent Allah has given me, I could use it to do fashion and do the haram and do one eye thing and all them kind of nonsense. <laughs> I could do that. And then what? When I face Allah, they really ask me, I gave you this, what did you do with it? No way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So instead, I'll do what I need to do. And that would be in that path so if there needs to be awareness on situations that uh, require people to be aware of I would dedicate my time to do it my last permission Turkey and Syria as we know was probably one of the biggest natural disasters in the last 10 years yeah probably after Haiti mm. when you were there I remember I was um, looking at your Instagram stories as well, and I think you experienced one of the aftershocks. Mm. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. How was that like? Eye opening. That's Talk me of, through the experience of, of you. I'm guessing, I don't know whether or not this was the case. Were you in a room? Were you. Outside? No, no, no. We, we were driving. We left one hour before the um, 6.4 earthquake hit Hatay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then from there, we were still on the road when that supposed earthquake happened. Mm -hmm. We didn't feel it as much as everyone else. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When we got to Adana, where our hotel was, that's where um, you had uh, just missed the 4.4 or 5.1 earthquake that hit there, in which the building was going like this. (laughs) I'm coming back, like an elastic band. Do you know what I mean? So... I can't say that I experienced the ground shaking like that because I was on the move. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? But what I did experience is when that seeing those buildings go like elastic bands, one, and the aftermath of how easy it would have been for death to catch up with us. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you take that into consideration, I was... I was like, mind blown. What were you doing there? Like, I I know you said you wanted to use that talent for the right causes and Mm -hmm. right things. So I just want to distinguish what you mean by retired. 
So when I saw you, I think you put it on your story, retired. Mm. Did you mean retired doing photography or do you mean retired doing photography and things that don't sit right with you? No, uh, so retired in terms of commercial, normal shoots. Okay. So I you want to take jobs? I want to take jobs. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I wouldn't do it. But in terms of aiding a charity or aiding an organization that's doing works yeah. in these causes, mm. and I sit right with those causes, I will do that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So let's say, for example, CAP. I went with CAP Foundation and Smiling Faces to Turkey. Yeah. Me being there and documenting their work that they were doing mm -hmm. shows the authenticity for people to give them the aid. Because mm -hmm. I'm the one there doing it. Yeah. With it. With yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people, some charities, sadly, they say they're there. They're not there. There's no mm. proof. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if I can prove that these charities are there and they're doing the work through my work and I'm there with them, Credibility that's, my, yeah. that's my input. As well as doing charity, but that's my main input. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Do they reach out to you? Do you reach out to them? No, they reach out to me. Okay. And when you, cause we had this conversation, funny enough, on the group chat. Sorry. About a videographer and a photographer. Like, what was it that you were doing? Was it just purely just pictures? Pure stills. Stills. Pictures. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't do videography. Okay. Because in my mind, mm. it was like the same thing, like pressing mm. the button, right? Nah, yeah, pressing the button, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I guess it's like, it's like different skills. You can be very good at one mm. or okay in two. And your fingers, I have to be the best at what I do. Yeah. So that's... So if I if I went down the videography route, I'd try to be the best videographer. I wouldn't even focus on photography. Yeah, yeah. I'd only use photography when it's needed. Mm. But in terms of like photography now, yeah. I'll try to be the best I can. But I also know that I can use my skill set to be a director mm. and direct and see the skills and the position for yeah. the videographer. Did you ever like... You know, studying was a big thing for you, like mathematics and whatnot. Um, and you said like when you would take a picture you'd speak to yourself and be like okay let me take this three seconds later did you ever actually learn photography from like a course never. afterwards never so it's all just based on you speaking to yourself yeah and that's why you call it a talent that's crazy is that why you call it a talent I don't know I it's guess definitely a talent you're so born you, with it bro there's, there's people that yeah, spend time mm -hmm. trying to dedicate years no, I, ain't got, I, ain't, I ain't got time for that man <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Wow. So I mean, even even um But you've got time for coding now. Why? Self taught myself. Yes, Why? So this is interesting. Huh? Why? Why what? Why did you want to learn to code? To be free from photography. Okay, so that's where that comes free from. from? Yeah. Photography. Oh, okay, well, I get what you mean. Okay. I thought we were talking about it um off air um when we had our meeting and I was saying I think it's the fact that you wanted to learn another language. That's why you wanted to do coding. No, couldn't, well, couldn't. Having this conversation, I understand it more. Yeah. As in, um, you want to free yourself because you have your own time, and it also um, adds to the fact that your face is not attached to it. Where mm. you just do your work, you get what you need to get out of that, and then do it what frees you to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what autonomy. Okay, just to paint the picture, finished uni. Um, obviously, that whole photography and teaching thing takes place. I say that whole photography thing like it's nothing, but to a lot of people, it's like, whoa, FIFA. Um, and now you kind of say, okay, cool. I'm not doing no more photography. Um, now you start to learn to code. Um, I think, and in that conversation, a lot of that comes from the fact that you did maths and with coding, there's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. um, the logical brain comes out again. The logical <laughs> brain comes out again. Or the creative. Yeah. Both, it's both, it's both. Yeah. 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 Um, you said it's to take yourself. You've had no prior experience to coding. Like, no. have you just did you just start picking it up recently? Yeah, I just signed up to Udemy and did a Udemy course and yeah. And how long ago was that? Eight, technically a year ago now. So, so was that at the same time as doing photography? Yeah, yeah. Okay, your balance. So a job from photography would mean would mean I don't have to work for about four or five months. Mm -hmm. In that four or five months, I'm idle. So I said, let me okay. actually pick up something. Yeah. To actually do mm -hmm. that still allows me to be free, but I know month to month there's money. So that with photography, you could go three months without a job, four months without a job. So if your last job didn't pay well, you're screwed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you can't really plan 
to go forward or the future. Yeah. So within that time period, I said, okay, let me let me smash this out and go at it mm. and try and add a new stream to my income. And is that going? Because I, I find it interesting. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Like, alhamdulillah. Is that going well? Yeah, like, man. Picking <laughs> it up because I remember like trying. Uh, to I got a job. I got a job now. Anything. Okay. I'm coding. Nice. Nice. Alhamdulillah, Jeremy. You know, I'm a code. I'm a full time coder, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, full time, full time, definitely, man. That's amazing, bro. So okay, I mean. if we close it off and say, I think this is like amazing in terms of I've learned a lot from you, yeah. and I think um, a lot of people um, can come on a platform, and it can be a bit of a look at me thing I've done this I've done that with you like I think it's testament to yourself again you're very self-aware and I think maybe it's age maybe it's your experiences maybe it's the way that you've been brought up um, I think a lot of it is the way you've been brought up I think your father's influence um, is just uh, yeah, it's amazing Allah, um, and I do think that for us to understand you better and where you're going and your trajectory and where you're going i want to understand what's next what's next what's next what's next for bruno to work as a full-time coder inshallah, inshallah. whilst um aiding charities and organizations in those affected areas whether it be syria turkey afghanistan pakistan uh, bangladesh neymar whatever that's my that's my goal. That's my that's my plan for the next goal. Yeah. How many years until I pass? That's Fun it. fact, actually, you know, this guy <laughs> is responsible for this this picture right here. Oh, do you remember I, this? Yeah, yeah. What yeah, did I say yeah, to you when I first saw that picture? Sick, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, wow. He's responsible for this picture. And you know what's crazy? I'll never take it down. <laughs> sure not. I, don't, I don't know how you've done it, but it, so it, it, it captures emotion. So many people. And it's just, I don't know. It just feels, every time I look at it, it just feels like more than, I don't know. It's just mental. Um, I don't know. But there is a closing thing that we like to do here on the podcast. There's two things. <laughs> okay. Uh, the first one is, question for the viewers. Um, because this is perspective, we like to learn from people. Um, I think something people will obviously gather something from this conversation. Mm. But if you could also give a question that will help people ponder and think about in order to try and help themselves, um, what would be a question for the viewers? I'll put you on the spot here. Um, it would be what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want your legacy to be? That's so deep, isn't it? <laughs> what it's, do it's you want your legacy to be? No, but you have to think about it, though. That's, yeah. that's the whole because point. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're only left with uh, three, three things when you go to the grave. And only one of them Stay. remains with you. Do you know that's what, what you do in this world. Exactly. So you have to build a legacy. Wow. <laughs> we have another thing <laughs> that we do at the end of every episode. And this is where... Eamon now needs to put a two minute timer on because <laughs> it's time for a game. Okay. We go through a different journey here. Yeah. Just like your life, we go mm. through a different journey. Yeah, yeah. Right at the end, we have a little game. Mm. And last week we had Yurimi on and um, he had four correct answers to our quiz. Um, okay. Some of this quiz is yeah. regarding us two. Um, some of this quiz is regarding yourself and some of your interests. And yeah, so there's 20 questions in two minutes mm. and you see how many questions you can get correct. Okay. Okay. Who's, <laughs> count, who's counting the scores? Um, everyone will do that as well. Yeah. Okay. Right, cool. Let me know when it's on. Look okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm listening, I'm listening. Yeah. Three, two, one. Okay. What's the capital of Argentina? Buenos Aires. Yeah. Okay. Which British supermarket has a clothing range named George? Asda. Oh wow. Uh, what does the CIA stand for? Central Intelligence Agency. Who did Will Smith slap at the Oscars? Chris Rock. What is the currency of Gambia? Uh, Dallas. Wow. What is the smallest planet in the solar system? Uh, it was supposed to be Pluto, but I don't know. Is it? What's the next one. 
Neptune, Uranus? No. No, I don't know. Uh, street artist Banksy is originally associated with which British city? Bristol. Wow, what kind of food is, what's that, penny? Pen. Pen. Hmm? <laughs> huh? What kind of food is pen? It's a pasta. What sport did David Beckham play? Football. Which country in the world is believed to have the most miles of the motorway? Uh, Russia. China. Oh, what does China. HDR stand for? Huh? HDR. High dynamic range. Yes. Which one of these is a fish? A whale, a shark, or a dolphin? Um, oh, uh, shark. Yeah. How many people have, wor- have walked on the moon? Ten. Close. Morocco became the second African country to be at the World Cup quarterfinals. Who was the first? Ghana, Cameroon. Ghana. How many siblings do I have? Three. <laughs> how many nations will host the 2026 World Cup? Three. Uh, how many kilometers are there in a mile? How many what? Kilometers are there in a mile? Kilometers in a mile? Yeah. I don't know. One point. I don't know, man. <laughs> nine, nine, most? nine. I don't know, man. No, no. What is the most sold flavor of Walker's crisps? The what? Sorry? Most sold flavor. Ready sorted. No. <laughs> How many siblings? Does Cheese and onion. Yeah, of course. How oh, many siblings man. does Bender have? I don't know. Two, three. Yes. How many subscribers do we currently have on Perspective? I should have checked it out. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Uh, wait, actually, I should have checked it Sixteen. 16K. No, no, no. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Maybe after this episode, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro. You smashed it. Yeah, he. I thought it was fourteen. Hmm? Fourteen correct answers. Well, how, how many does I even know? But I have twenty. I felt like you were getting all of them right. The ones that you like for me. Uh, I asked you what how many siblings I had. I felt sorry for you. That was like that's deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Oh my God. You know what? I, I was I was just writing the questions before the episode. Yeah. And I feel like next time around, I need to do it a lot harder because I, I, some of them I don't even know how you knew. I feel, yeah. 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 I was just like, Banksy. How? How do you know that one? Because you read into him. Creative. He's a creative. You have to read into him. You have to know what he's about. That is crazy. I probably would have got like three. Yeah. I'm not and one lie. of them would be, how many siblings do I have? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Wow. Bro. Listen. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, obviously, like we kind of knew of each other, but I think this platform really got um, us to know each other a lot. Seven more. Seven told me how you got though. How many siblings do I have? Six. Six. Mashallah, <laughs> <to> mashallah. <laughs> Big family. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mashallah, um, that's bad. That's but bad. yeah, no, man, bro. Thank you so much. Exactly. Um, honestly, like the, this is the reason why we even like have these sorts of conversations to um, see the journey of of people's lives and. Yeah, man. Any other things you want to add, Bendif? Or are we good to... Listen. Waka, da, 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 there's, <laughs> there's, there's only certain times... And you know how much I talk. There's only certain times in my life that I'm just like... I don't know what else to say. Um, I just want to thank you for um, coming on this platform. Um, and yeah, I appreciate it. And oh, Thank you for having me, man. It's been fun. Thank you, Thank bro. Thank you. I mean, may Allah increase your, your endeavors, man. I Thank mean, you, man. successful. Until next time. I forgot what you said. To Take care of yourselves, guys. Spend time with your family. And we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> wow. Uh, that was a good one. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bro, I was just like, no, half the time, I don't get I don't not talk. Mm. I always find something to say. But.